on parade in front of the world. This was the start of Paul Rousseau Sebagina's trial, a man whose heroism became a Hollywood blockbuster. But this sequel has no happy ending in sight. Today, the man who saved lives during the Rwandan genocide was found guilty of terror charges and sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. The court finds that they should be found guilty for being part of this terror group, MRCD, FLN. They attacked people in their homes, they attacked people in their cars, or even on the road traveling. But for some, the damning verdict was really on democracy in Rwanda. Today's judgment before an international audience has been condemned as a show trial. Paul Rusesabagina has been a high-profile critic of the current Rwandan government, led by this man. Paul Kagame was once considered Rwanda's liberator. To many, he's now its autocrat. And dissenters have found themselves enemies of the state. Paul Rusesabagina was a member of the Rwanda Movement for Democratic Change and even called for an uprising. The time has come for us to use any means possible to bring about change in Rwanda as all political means have been tried and failed. But he denied responsibility for violence by its armed affiliate, the National Liberation Front, and since these pictures were taken, later refused to take part in the trial. He had faced restrictions to legal representation. His very presence was the result of an elaborate kidnap from Dubai by the Rwandan government. Professor Begina was not even a Rwandan citizen, having long relinquished his passport another injustice listed by his supporters. Paul didn't receive a fair trial, and it's not just us, his legal team, saying that. People followed these proceedings, independent international monitors have taken the extraordinary step of coming out before the verdict and saying that the trial was so unfair that any verdict should be called into question. Please, put the gas. This is how most people envision Paul Rosessa Begina when his story was popularised in the film Hotel Rwanda. To many, he will always be this hero, and he has been celebrated by the very Western allies who support the current Rwandan government. But is the tide changing? It's a country that's regarded as a model by a lot of uh, African leaders um, because they see it as being incredibly disciplined, as getting a lot of development aid, being very proactive, but it's an extremely controlled society where there's a track record now which has been logged by all the human rights uh, groups of um, dissidents, journalists, human rights activists, opposition leaders being hunted down, disappearing, being arrested on very arbitrary charges. Do you think that this trial will change the relationship between Rwanda and the international community? Western governments provide Rwanda with a huge amount of the government's operating budget. Their aid makes it possible for the government to keep operating. So their approval is very important and they've been increasingly disturbed by this trial. There may be repercussions because it's confirmed what a lot of those countries were feeling that, you know, on the human rights front, Kagame is becoming a very worrying figure. This trial was supposed to be Rwanda's show of strength, but in the minds of many, Paul Rusesabagina is a hero. At 67, he has effectively been given a life sentence under an autocratic administration that now looks increasingly exposed. Well, Paul Rusesabagina's daughter, Karin Kanimba, has been campaigning for her father's release. And I asked her first what she feared would happen to him now. My worst fear is that they will kill him, like they have killed many others in Rwandan prisons. Paul Kagame has tried to kill my father several times. They've, there has been assassination attempts. He has broken into my home, our home here in Belgium. They have followed him at conferences, universities where he was speaking to try to intimidate him. And after this, now they kidnapped him, tortured him, denied him all his basic human rights, all his basic rights to defense. And now they're Paul Kagame wants to jail him and silence him forever. President Kagame's uh, accusation is that your father was uh, attempting to overthrow him. Well, they have shown absolutely zero credible evidence that that was the case. And my father has always been about human rights. He has always been defending human rights. He has always talked about reconciliation. Um, my father has stood up for the people that Paul Kagame has abused, has violated, has killed and has jailed. And that is exactly why he's being silenced today. But the problem, of course, is that Kagame is absolutely convinced that your father wants rid of him, uh, wants him removed, wants a democratically elected government to take his place. 
and he fears him. And therefore, can you really hope, even if the international community do press for his freedom, that anything will happen? I believe, I, I truly believe so. I truly believe so because Paul Kagame does feel pressure and there are political avenues to put that pressure on. And I believe Paul Kagame made a terrible calculation, political calculation, because many people have already begun to distance themselves from the dictatorship. And so I believe that the pressure will work. I believe in humanity. My father never lost hope. He never lost hope during the Rwandan genocide when he saved people. Um, and we will not lose hope. We will not lose faith. And we truly believe that the international community being aware of this injustice can now remain um, silent. Have you managed to talk to your father in prison? Yes, we have about five minute call with him once a week. It's only five minutes and it's not enough to say much. Um, even the few things that we say, my father is speaking under pressure. He's speaking, he's not comfortable. There are authorities, Rwandan authorities, the same individuals who tortured him, standing next to him as we speak with him. Um, and uh, we, he, he sounds strong emotionally, but he sounds physically um, not good. He sounded like he's been telling us that he feels these he doesn't have his medication. He was held in solitary confinement for over 250 days. It just has psychological impact on an individual. Um, so I truly hope that my father stays okay, stays strong. I hope he doesn't face the same fate as Kizito Mihigo, who was killed by Kagame in Rwandan prison. Um, but I hope that um, I hope that he doesn't that he stays strong until we are able to get him help. And in appealing to the international community. Who do you look to to bring pressure? Who? The Americans, the British, the Belgians, who? So it's important to clarify that in the United States, um, the special presidential envoy for hostage affairs is dealing with my father's case. That means the US consider my father an illegal detainee or a hostage. They have made a commitment to bringing him home. So I want them to fulfill their promise and bring him, my father home. The United States Congress have written to Secretary Blinken asking him to use all diplomatic means at his disposal in order to bring my father home. Uh, they've also written to President Kagame and threatened the, the reputation of Rwanda and the relations of both countries. So we know that there are political avenues and Kagame truly cares about his image. I mean, he's willing to spend all of the country's money into his image. And so we believe that continuing to advocate, uh, to tell people, to show the world the reality behind this regime, um, and to encourage teams like Arsenal that are taking money from the dictator to stop taking his money, because this will be the strongest show of support and the strongest show, uh, the strongest demonstration that the international community does not stand by this level of um, injustice. Karine Namimba, thank you very much indeed for talking with us. Thank you.